I feel like out of any week we have done so far, this might be one of these stranger episodes, <laughs> at least in terms of material that we are covering this week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is, a, uh, it is a combination, to say the least. <laughs> That's an understatement. That is indeed an understatement. Hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. Mm -hmm. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Lady M. Hello. And this week, we are going to talk about a manga. A manga? And a video game. Yay! Big yays. <laughs> Uh, I feel that we we should we'll probably start off with your your manga first, okay, and then we'll dive into our shenanigans, <laughs> our game, our game shenanigans. Yes, yay, ugh, ugh. So we're gonna tell people what what we're gonna talk about in general. No, we're gonna just let them wait and see. <laughs> the, they've they've seen the title of this episode by now. Okay, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So they at least know what they're getting into. Well, if they know at all what any of these things are. But now you know it's a video game and a manga. But reverse that, because we're starting with a manga. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I guess I will talk about a manga then. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, you had mentioned in passing when I was reading uh, Become You... Uh, that, uh, what, what's the name? Otto? Did I say that right? I didn't, you kind of cut out. Oh, <laughs> I, I was saying, uh, it was written and illustrated by Ichiko Takano, and I, I think, did I, yeah. did I say that right? That seems right. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed Orange. Um, we talked about Orange before, and I've talked about the first volume of become you and how stinking good it is and so you had like mentioned that dream and sun existed and i was like okay i have to go check this out i have to find it so i found it and i bought it and i read through all of the 10 volumes um in the past few weeks mm -hmm. um so it says that it was originally published in 2008 um, I think the redone art version was 2011. That seems accurate. Because um, it originally came out and then the art was completely redone mm -hmm. to be cuter. All um, right. So, yeah, it is. Um, it's it's basically like slice of life romance shoujo. That's really like the gist of it. So, kind of what you would expect if you like if you had read Orange previously, sort of. <laughs> but without all the the heavy drama, I would yeah, assume. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it lacks a lot of that. This is more lighthearted. It is. Um. So the main character is uh, Shimana, and um, Shimana is essentially upset. Uh. <laughs> What a way to start. Yeah, so her mom's dead. Um, mom's dead parkour. And um, oh, it's the quiet man part two. <laughs> uh, her dad got remarried and her dad and the uh, the new lady have like a tiny baby. So she kind of feels like she's just kind of like there, even though like she's, you know, she lives in their house with them. And it's still her dad, but, you know, she's in high school and now there's an infant. And so um, she she feels upset and runs away from home. And she trips over a man in the park who's wearing a kimono and is drunk as <laughs> And so he realizes that she ran away. And he basically says, like, Okay, well, I have a place where you could stay. And she's like, oh, really? And he tells her that the rent is like, I think it's like 50 cents. It's insane. It's a tiny, tiny amount. Um, and he says that 
you know, the, the things that um, she has to do in order to live there are one, she has to find the key to his house. And she's like, why do you not have the key to your own house? That's weird. And he explains that there are two boys that she goes to school with um, who might have the key. She needs to find the key. And then the other one is something about, like, she needs to, like, find her dream. Which, keep in mind, this man is super, super drunk and laying on the ground at a park. And offering her a place to stay. It's very normal behavior. For less than a dollar. <laughs> um, so she she finds out like, oh, okay, you know, I go to school with these two dudes. Zen is her classmate and she knows of him. And then um, Asahi is kind of like... For lack of a better word, and how manga and anime always has like a prince of the school. Like he's the beautiful one that everybody's in love with. Except for like, he also has this weird thing that like, during certain points of school, he's like wearing glasses and reading a book. And like the way that it's drawn is that his hair changes colors and that nobody recognizes who he is. Um, so she's like, oh yeah, that's Asahi. And they're like, no, it's not. Like, he's hot. Who is that? That's not hot. And I'm like, it, 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 it. <laughs> so I don't understand how that works. Um, so anyway, she finds them and asks about the key and they're like, oh yeah, so we live with that guy and he was super, super drunk and we don't want him to drink anymore. So we just locked him out. Um, also, by the way, hi, new roommate. <laughs> so, um, the, the drunk man is, a uh, Taiga, and he is a, he's either 22, yeah, he's 22, he's 22, and always wears a kimono, and is their landlord, uh, so he lives in the house, the two other dudes live in the house, and now Shimana lives in the house, what could possibly happen here besides shenanigans? Nothing. Everyone just goes to sleep. <laughs> um, so, there are quirks to the characters, um, as always. Zen is really, really obsessed with pandas, and there's always, like, 15 pandas whenever he's around, like, on his panels. Like, he just always has pandas. Um, Asahi is a very serious guy, um... He's also a really great cook. He's like the cook for the house. Uh, very responsible, has a part-time job, and wants to be a lawyer. He wants to wants to be a defense lawyer. Um, basically, he's, he's Phoenix, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then no one really knows at this point, like at the beginning, what Taiga does other than just be drunk and is be weird. Um, so initially when Shimana gets there, she's like, okay, I am in love with Asahi. I'm in love with him. I saw him for like five minutes and I have to pursue him. He's amazing. Uh, so she does that and eventually learns that like, oh, he has a childhood friend that he's actually in love with and has been in love with for ages. And she has to move to New York and get married. And, um, he's very sad about it. <laughs> so... They can't date. And this whole time, Zen is, like, trying to wrestle with his own feelings because he has the hots for Shimana, but doesn't want her to know it. Um, and at one point, she's, like, going through his room and finds out that he he uh, wants to be, like, a manga. Like, he, he makes manga. And he is giving up his dream because um, he has a very large family and apparently like his dad got injured and can't work anymore. So like they're low on money. And so his older brother who is, um, so there's Zen and Ken, uh, he used to be like a boxing champion. And there's a boxing manga that he's working on. There's there ends up being this whole subplot of like Ken is gonna go back into boxing and 
Zen has like this heart to heart moment with Shimada and like just the heck out of her, which she doesn't really like, which fair. Um, and so like, there's this whole thing between them throughout like all 10 volumes and that like Zen really, really cares for her. And he's always like there whenever something goes wrong and he's trying to like make sure that she's happy no matter what. And he's even like very, very supportive of her. Like when she decides that she's in love with other people. Um, so I was like, man, that's actually like, he does get annoying at points, but for the most part, I'm like, you know, that that's the proper way to deal with this. Like he has feelings for her, but he realizes like, oh, it's not me that she's interested in. So like, I just want her to be happy. And I was kind of shocked that that happened. Um, like I said, he can be a little pushy every once in a while, but for the most part, he's he's fine and really loves his pandas. <laughs> uh, so we also find out that um, Ken is the same age as the landlord, which it should be mentioned that Shimana just calls him the landlord the whole time. The entire manga, that's what she calls him, is The Landlord. That's his full name. That's, that's on his birth certificate. <laughs> He's just The Landlord. Well, mm -hmm. speaking of names, um, so they find out that Ken uh, went to school with The Landlord. And he's like, hey, you guys want to see like our our yearbook? I'll bring our yearbook so you can see what The Landlord looked when he was in high school. <laughs> um it's probably isn't that much different because it was like four years ago. Well, he's a little bit different, but also his name is completely different. Yeah, it's not the landlord. It's it's not the landlord, but it's also not Taiga. Um, I don't remember what the heck his actual name is, but it doesn't really matter because he's the landlord. Boot Scoot and Boogie. <laughs> I hope his name is Boot Scoot and Boogie. That's perfect. Um. And we get, like, flashbacks of the fact that, like, the landlord was dating his teacher, his English teacher, in high school. Just, oh, good. No, it's pretty gross. Um, and Ken's current girlfriend had, like, the hots for him. But um, Ken kept, like confessing to her and also like at one point protected her from some butthole who ends up being like the world championship boxing guy that Ken kicks the butt of later as well and wins like a ton of money um and she's like you know what I'll go out with you and they've just been dating ever since <laughs> um and we find out that like the landlord consistently says that he hates women which is not nice and also, like, a big red flag. But he says that he doesn't understand women. They don't make any sense. He hates women. And um, so once Shimada, like, gets over Asahi and his his whole, like, situation with that girl, um, she decides that she's in love with the landlord. Which, again, should be mentioned she is 16, and as I've said before, he is 22. Gross. Um, and so for a big part of the manga, it's her like trying to figure out those feelings and him just like rebuking her, basically saying like, no, no, no. Being a landlord. Be <laughs> being a landlord, but also like trying to be a responsible adult-ish. Um, and there is a school festival that she ends up taking him to, and they decide that they're going to dress him up in a school uniform, because you can rent school uniforms for some reason here. <laughs> and so they dress him up, and, um, there, there's, like, a writing contest, and Shimana goes up and, like, reads out this whole thing about like how she's in love with him and like wants to know his answer which is a really manipulative thing to do mm -hmm. um and so everybody's like oh man you gotta say yes to her you gotta do this you gotta do that you gotta do this you gotta say yes 
And he's like, I'll tell you later. And leaves. <laughs> um, Gotta go. And he basically says, like, I'm not in love with you, but I could be in love with you. And she's like, so does that mean? <laughs> it's a very non-answer. Yeah, yeah. And so she's like, so are we dating? And um, so, yes, they decide they're going to date-ish. And um, nothing really changes for a bit. And um, it's a whole lot of Shimada being, like, really, really insecure and really confused and he's just kind of there mm -hmm. um we also find out like in the midst of this that he's a prosecutor just casually <laughs> sure yeah like 23 year old prosecutor here but um who's drunk all the time uh and he has a very strict dad hmm so um at one point, he calls and is like, she's hanging out with her friends, and he's kind of harassing her, like, I need to see you. I need to see you today. I want to hang out with you. And she's like, okay, well, I'm just going to drop everything and go hang out with you. Um, and so they do, and then I forget what the heck happens, but basically she breaks up with him, and he gets super upset. Um and then later she's talking to, I think it's Asahi, and he's like, oh, yeah, you guys went out on his birthday, right? And you dumped him. Like, what a gift. And she's like, that was his birthday? <laughs> um, Got him. Yep. So now he's, I can't remember if he's 22 or 23. I, I don't remember when he turns what age. But anyway, he's too old for her. Um, and Zen and Shimana turned 17 in the middle of this. And so, like, the back half of the manga is really them just, like, figuring out what they feel for each other. And a whole lot of just, like, tiptoeing around it and him trying to figure out things and her trying to figure out things and her being, like, super insecure all the time. And Zen supporting her from the background. And at one point, like, the landlord just, like, kisses her and... Um, also, there is this character that shows up at one point, and he's my favorite character just because he's so insanely ridiculous. Um, but he's this, like, cop, which initially I'd be like, I don't like you. Um, but he has these, like, giant bags under his eyes and wears his hat sideways no matter what hat he's wearing. <laughs> and basically everybody hates him because he's just, like, really, really sarcastic but also like no one understands his humor and he's very straightforward uh he has a tragic backstory surprisingly but um <laughs> he's he's really funny um but he's basically like yo dude no you should not do this also she's in high school do not date this girl um the voice of reason. Um, but does he listen? No. Uh, it turns out that that dude has also been working with uh, the landlord's very aggressive dad um, to keep them apart. And um, the dad decides, like, okay, well, we can sell the house. That'll solve this issue. And the landlord's like, no, not the house. The children go there, and they're happy. <laughs> Not to think of the children. Think of the children. Don't get rid of the house. Um, and so all of that's happening, and um, it comes out at one point that, like, the landlord didn't want to be a prosecutor. He wanted to be an English teacher. <laughs> Um, completely, two completely <laughs> different things. And he uh, he took the entrance exam, but apparently failed. And um, at one point, Shimana and the the dopey cop guy like go to the college and apparently are able to somehow find out that he didn't actually fail, that he got like a perfect score. And I'm like, they wouldn't just tell you that. <laughs> Who are you? 
Um, but apparently, like, his dad made it so that he uh, he couldn't go and had to become a prosecutor. Um, the whole, like, house thing is going on. It's like, oh, no, we're going to lose the house. Uh, in the middle of this, it is discovered that, like, Asahi is actually the landlord's younger brother. And um, so his, they have the same dad. And he also learns, um, like, his, his adoptive dad who's been raising him is like, yeah, you don't actually want to know who your family, like, your real parents are. Like, you, trust me, you really don't want to know. And... <laughs> He, a tactic that always works. Yeah, and so um, again, he finds out that like butthead prosecutor dad is his dad, but also this girl that he's been in love with, her mom is his mom. What? Yep. Okay. Yep. So um, they're related, and. You know, this is the girl that he keeps saying, like, he's going to marry, even though she's getting married in New York and all that jazz. And at one point, and I sent you the picture, because um, I was like, ooh. Uh, he he says to the effect, like, even though I know we're related, I still love her. And I'm like, that's your sister. It's not cool. Nope. Nope. Not romantic at all. That's just gross. <laughs> um. So basically, this manga could be renamed like "Everybody Makes Poor Life Choices," <laughs> um, because in order to not lose the house, the landlord decides that he's going to go talk to his dad, and his dad's going to um, relocate him somewhere else as a prosecutor. So he's like, "Okay, I'll do that. Don't evict my kids." Uh, so the cop moves in to replace landlord and landlord gets his phone number changed as soon as he lands and all the mail is rerouted to cop's grandma's house so that he can't contact the kids in the house. Um, they find ways around that. Um, Shimana and the landlord like are officially dating at this point and have been officially dating since like right before he left and he basically says like hey if we still have feelings for each other in two years when i get back let's just he's like okay <laughs> romance <laughs> um it's it's very very weird but she does still care about him he comes back in two, yeah he comes back in two years um and you get the whole like flash forward this is what everybody's doing um also he is very much on his way to becoming a lawyer um and has attended his sister slash big crush's wedding and told her that she looked really nice in her dress and that he wanted to be the one to marry her real weird yep that's your sister buddy <laughs> calm down <laughs> um and she's like, maybe in our next slide, they did get married. And I'm like, oh, yuck. Um, Zen has become a manga artist, and he is he gets published a lot in uh, Shonen Jump, which yay for him. <laughs> um, he also is dating this girl that I completely neglected to mention because they're like, oh right. Zin, he apparently needs to date somebody so he doesn't care for Shimana anymore, right? How about this random girl that we're going to throw in in, like, volume nine? <laughs> um, so they do that, and um, that's apparently how he gets over Shimana, but it feels very forced. Mm -hmm. Um... And like I said, landlord's back and he's going to get married to Shimana. But first, Shimana has a dream. Remember how he told her to have a dream in the beginning? It was about his son. Now, now she has a dream. Well, she actually does have something about dreaming son later. But um, 
she decided that her dream was, and I'm just like, oh my God, you really have no identity whatsoever. Um, her dream is to go to college with the landlord. Okay. And so he's going to retake the entrance exam for the really prestigious university so that he can become an English teacher. And she's going to take it with him. And uh, it doesn't even really mention like what her major would be, what she would focus on. Um, at one point, she says that she wants to be a wedding planner, but like that was <laughs> yeah, something you go to college for. That was as a joke during their wedding. By the way, they get married. Um, but yeah, she studies her butt off and like actually gets in with him, and that's her dream. Yay! What a dream! Right, like girl has zero identity besides like i'm in love with this guy <laughs> it's so frustrating um so yeah they get married uh he gets upset because he has to wear western clothing at the wedding um and she wears like a really poofy dress um he reveals that like he's had feelings for her for a very long time despite the fact that he was saying he didn't uh, she says that she wants to be a wedding planner. Zen shows up to the wedding in, like, shorts and black tights under his shorts for some reason. And also a suit tie, like a suit and tie. Um, with his, his not-yet-girlfriend, and then he just decides at the wedding, like, oh, hey, you're my girlfriend. Because she's like, you never actually officially asked me. He's like, we go on dates. Like, we hang out. Is that not what it is? She's like, you didn't ask me to be your girlfriend. He's like, okay, well, then be my girlfriend, please. <laughs> she's like, okay, fine. Um, Deal with it. <laughs> right. <laughs> basically. And, um, yeah, basically, like, how it ends is at their wedding, Shamana says that, like, her dream was like the sun and it was being with him and he was the sun and da 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 and, um there's this like jokey thing at the end about him like really wanting to sleep with her now that they're married whoa yeah and so like she gets into bed with him and they're like why do we buy two double beds like we we should have gotten like one big bed and um so she gets into the bed with him and she feels like she's dying and then Zen and Asahi are like, hey, we need a place to crash. Can we crash in here? And so they get in the other bed together. <laughs> um, and thwart his plans. Um, so yeah, I, I was mostly frustrated for a lot of this because she really had no identity other than having feelings for people. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, and I'm sure that people who are listening to this at this point know too, I have real bad issues with like growing people dating high schoolers. And the fact that she was 16 when he met her is just like unacceptable to me. Like if she had been 19 as she is in the epilogue and he had been like in his 20s, it would have been fine. I would have been okay with it. It still would have been a little weird, but it would have been fine. Um, but with her being 16 when he first met her and him being like an actual adult with a job and all that and, and a house, like, no, that is unacceptable and weird. And the thing is that, like, I kept hoping as I was reading it that the end game would be Zen because, like, he he kept being there for her and he kept saying, like, you know. I, I don't care if you, like, pick me or not. Like, I just want you to be happy. And I was like, him? The other one's being a tool bag to you. Like, the landlord is nothing but an <laughs> for her, like, 95% of the manga. And is just, like, unclear with his feelings and is kind of a butthole and, like, calls her a child, which she is a child. But, you know, like he's just unkind to her and the whole time Zen's over there like genuinely trying to support her and make sure that like she's happy and she like 
questioned several times, like, do I have feelings for him? And it's like... LOL, JK. I was really, really hoping he was in game. Um, but then they just went along with that landlord. I'm like, mm. And then at that point, I was like in volume eight or nine when all this was happening. I was like, I gotta go ahead and finish it out. But like, I'm so mad. I'm too far in. Um, Pot committed. But the thing is, is that Zen was the superior guy of all of the guys that were options there. And his panda obsession was really cute. But what if it was red pandas? Even better. <laughs> Even better. Um, and like putting in a love interest for him at the end, just like to make it so that it was okay. It was kind of odd. Um, also, like they threw in like the cops backstory at one point to try and like explain why he was working with the dad prosecutor. And apparently what had happened is that there was this girl that he knew in high school that it was like she had confessed to him and it was unclear like what he felt for her and she got upset at one point and like ran away from him but ran in front of a car <laughs> and has been in a coma since then and the dad prosecutor like prosecuted the guy that hit her and so the dude has been like visiting her hospital room like every day since the coma taking her flowers and all that and when she finally wakes up um you know they eventually like get together but uh it it was kind of an odd thing to just come in and like all right here's his tragic backstory now I'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> fine i guess and like they bring in his cousin at one point who tried to hit on shimana and i'm like does everybody love this girl like what it's very very weird but i was just really frustrated by the end which you got to hear live. Ow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm good. <laughs> Did my rage boil over and injure you? <laughs> no, I had my knee on my desk. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, Zen was the superior choice. She should have dated him the end. Don't date high schoolers, kiddos. It's the moral of the story here. Unless you're a high schooler, then it's fine. You can date high schoolers if you're a high schooler. But, like, if you're older than a high schooler, no. Unacceptable. Creepy. Anyway, I stream with Sun. Now let's go on the opposite end of the, spe and the end of the spectrum. Oh? With what we're going to talk about next. Is it really opposite in the spectrum that there's still going to be Al Rage involved? Well, in terms of, like, content. Okay. All right. I believe you. Um, there was a game on sale this weekend for five bucks. There was. It was very cheap. Uh, Ubisoft was like, hey, the Division 2 is getting a new update soon. You want to buy it for, like, five bucks? And people were like, sure. <laughs> People being us. People being us, specifically, yes. Um, so yeah, that's what we did. We, we bought The Division 2, which obviously is a very owl game, clearly. <laughs> and I was raging at the beginning because I had to delete so much stuff off my PS4 to actually install it because it was like 110 gigs. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Which, speaking of high gig downloads, yeah. apparently the FF7 remake is going to be 100 plus gigs. <laughs> It's not even the full game. It's not even, like, it's only the first three hours of the game. Ugh. Anyways, yeah, game sizes are really bad. Yes. But, uh, yeah, we decided to play this because I was like, hey, this is a really cheap game. We could probably make some fun of this. And you were like, ah, fine. You're like, hey, Al, you want to take me on a tour of DC? And I was like, yeah, sure. That was kind of like the big pitch, really. <laughs> it was really how you got me in. Because otherwise, this is not a game I would have played no. ever. 
So, for those that don't know, The Division 2 is a schluter, a loot shooter, where it is coming off the heels of the first game where there was a a viral illness that was spread out during Black Friday, spread through dollar bills, and it left the country crippled. So, like... It looks like a post-apocalyptic wasteland. So the first game took place in New York, and then the second game takes place in Washington, D.C., a place that Al is very familiar with. Yes. So I remember when we watched the trailer for this last year, two years ago probably, when it was first really announced, because this game did come out last year, um, you were like, oh, I know what this is. I know where this is. I wonder how they're going to do this in this game and all that. Because when they did the first game with New York, they basically did a lot of like, trying to kind of maintain the idea of what New York City is, but also having to, like, condense blocks and streets together because, you know, they're not going to make the entire... entire the entirety, entirety of, New York. of New York City, yeah. So, trimming and cuts had to be made. And that was something I wanted to see, like, how you would react to and just to see, like, you know, what was your opinion on, like, what they did with this game and then once we got into the game we realized like there was even more that we could uh we could poke and prod at (laughs) that would be very relevant to you um also we made our characters look like the absolute worst dirt bags oh god they're such dirt bags and it's really good my character has a early 2000s new metal goatee it's (sighs) really good and really bad yeah it's 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 really bad (laughs) Um, so we have not finished this game. Nope. We're like maybe a third in, mm-hmm. if that. Um, but really, we. I really wanted just like to to see how Al, you know, reacted to Washington D.C. in its virtual form in this video game. And before we get into the other stuff, what would you? What was your impression of like how they represented D.C. from like the the bits that we have seen so far? Because obviously, there's still like large chunks of the map that we have not looked at. Yeah, I mean, there's still large chunks. Um, I mean, they get the general idea of it down okay. Um, I mean, like, I was able to, and this is going to sound strange, but, like, I was able to actually use landmarks that I know, and I'm like, oh, okay, I go this way, and I can get to this place, or I go this way, and I can get to this place. And, like, you're not going to be able to do that with things like, stores and restaurants but like roads and Mm -hmm. like actual landmarks that you would know or like there was one moment that i don't think i actually said it out loud but like we walked past the uh the tunnel that would take you to like 395 Mm -hmm. it's shut in the game but i'm like oh the five tunnel um so like for the most part that was generally fine um like they got the landscape of it downish mm-hmm. like it is condensed in ways but it it's still noticeable that you're like oh okay this is this part of dc this is this part of dc which in that case is probably like that's a that's a good thing to have yeah um where we got we got interesting was that like one of the, there's an early mission where you're like in a museum and we were like just looking around at like oh like you know how would they is this like an accurate exhibit and everything like how does this like how would this work how this function in in reality and everything Mm -hmm. and like it was actually interesting because like you know they had like little kiosks that like would like tell you stuff like kind of similar to like an actual museum yes so like it's something that's like very it's it's like a a little neat touch that you wouldn't really expect um so we were kind of like looking through that like oh this is an interesting little thing and then like a few missions later we went to specific actual museums that are in dc and one in particular that you've actually been very accustomed to yes um so one of these was you thought was actually pretty pretty well represented yeah i mean it was okay but it benefited in the fact that we only went to a very tiny portion of it Mm -hmm. and the other was a little they took liberties with to say the least (laughs) liberties to say the least um well, and then there was one that really butchered. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say one of the things that was 
a minor grievance, but a grievance nonetheless, um, is that on the mall, there is this carousel that I know and love. And there is this sea monster on there that like everything else is a horse, but there's one sea monster. And I was like, I want to see if they put the sea monster on. They didn't. Why would you not put the sea monster on? <sighs> um, yeah, you, you kind of got to hear a bit of me go on like uh, <laughs> rants. So um, most of anybody listening to this would know that I have like a PhD in history, but they might not know that I have a master's in public history, which is like museum work and that I worked mm -hmm. in museums for a good while. Um, some might know that I worked in one of the Smithsonian's, but um, anyway, I, I museum work is like a big passion of mine. I think it's really fantastic and it's something that I care a lot about. And as you mentioned, like one of the first missions that we had was this one museum and I was looking at an exhibit. I'm like, this doesn't flow right. And like, I, I made you come back after we killed like 10,000 guys. And I was like, look, when you walked into this room, you would start here, but the information would be backwards. <laughs> and um, so I think that's probably where you realize that this is what you had gotten yourself into. No, I, I, I found it completely <laughs> fascinating. So... <laughs> I uh, very much enjoyed the owl tour through these video game museums. So when we went to the American History Smithsonian, like we walked in, I'm like, which I guess to to be fair, like they are classified as like the names of the actual museums. Mm -hmm. So like you have the American History Museum, then the Air and Space Museum, mm -hmm. but they don't have the Smithsonian name license or recognition or anything like that. Yeah, like they are not titled Smithsonian museums. And they're usually not, um, like, on the official branding. Um, like, they would be on, like, the pamphlets and everything. But when you're actually talking about the museums themselves, they usually aren't. You wouldn't mm -hmm. say, like, the Smithsonian National, like, American. Hold on. Let me try that again. You wouldn't <laughs> say the Smithsonian American History Museum or whatever. You wouldn't say that. You wouldn't say the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, like, you just say air and space museum but none of that branding even shows up at all no no, no. like you see none of it um so that is an interesting aspect of it but um we were talking about at one point like oh you know maybe they they couldn't put certain things in um but the thing with the smithsonian museums is that because they are funded by the government they can't actually be copyrighted um, so it is possible that the name Smithsonian is, I don't know for a fact, but the actual content of the museums cannot be mm -hmm. because it is produced by the government. And so it has to be like oh, open to the public. Um, so anyway, uh, one of our first ones was go to the American History Museum and I was like, okay, cool. Like once we go in here, if we go into this like door right here on the right, We'll go straight back and then we'll see the star spangled banner and so um I, I took you in there and it's graffitied and messed up but i was like yeah this is actually pretty much exactly like how they have it displayed in the museum like the lighting's right um you know there's junk around in there but like you know that's because the city has been taken over by weirdos mm -hmm. um but like I was impressed that they got the actual display style right and like the lighting right and the way that the room is structured. I was like, okay, all right, that's pretty cool. I can appreciate that. Um, and then we went through a lot of the um, like transportation area of the American History Museum. And one of the biggest things that is like well known for that one is the. Um, I almost called it a choo-choo train. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it is um, this big train that is in the middle of the museum. And so that was there. I was like, okay, I, I know what that is. That's exciting. Um, they have the old cars, which was a, a another good thing. Um, and one of the things that I find interesting about um, the American History Museum, which... Um, I think that exhibit is called America on the Move or something like that. 
because it's all about like how American transportation has changed over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, like I said, it's it's relatively accurate. Um, they also have all these like little mini buildings built up, um, which is also something that they have in the in the museum. And that was neat. They didn't have as much stuff in this museum, though. Like, it was basically those things in, like, the, the Vietnam section. Which, um, the Vietnam section, there are a few liberties taken with it. And I think it's in a different part of the museum, actually. Um, it does have the, um, like, piped-in helicopter sounds, though, which is kind of a nice touch Mm -hmm. um i was real bummed that they didn't have any of the like pop culture sections that you'd go through like there's an entire like american culture display that like we just didn't get to see at all because i wonder if that would have been much harder to put in it might have been because like if you're looking at pop culture stuff you have you'd have to get rights to like likenesses that's true and stuff like that so probably they probably looked at him like no yeah maybe um, so they combined a few things in this one, but for the most part, I was like, you know, that's a pretty accurate, um, it's a pretty accurate, like, can museum. So that, mm-hmm. That's fine. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't hate it. Um, and especially because I, like I you're did... looking at this as like. Not only as like a representation of a museum, but also as a video game level. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so. so like there are some things that like it makes sense that they would um like relocate and all that jazz. Like it makes sense that they would relocate some of the like building structures that are in different places in the museum mm-hmm. into these places for cover purposes. Right. Um so like yes, they are I like they're places in the museums that have that that's not necessarily the transportation part but like you know they're they're trying ish um there's something else the american history museum heck what was it heck mm, oh um i was kind of bummed that like in a weird way there's this entire section about like the dresses of the first ladies and I was kind of hoping that would show up just for funsies. <laughs> um, but it didn't. And it's on the second floor anyway. So um, so I was okay. I was like, all right. You know, they're trying. They're putting some stuff in there that's like well-known. Cool. But also from like a video game of this nature, like probably better than you would have expected. Yes. And then we went to Air and Space. Which you were extremely excited for. I was so excited to go to Air and Space Museum. I was so, so happy. I'm like, oh, yay, we get to go to Air and Space. There's a mission there. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> um, so we went. And they made us go through the parking garage, which was interesting. Uh, so we did. We went through the parking garage and then came up through one of the elevators. It's on the side um, nearest to the... Um, like early days of flight exhibit well it would have been if it were here um but when we first like piped ourselves into it there was a big gunfight and all that jazz and i was like oh look like here's the pan am airplane that you can walk in and see like what flying was like in the early days of like 50s and 60s meaning early days um i was like there's like the boeing jet that's up there you can see that walk through it um you know, these are all things that are right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I walked up the stairs and was like, okay, there's the drone. That's supposed to be there. That's fine. And I was looking I'm like, okay, it's got the, the like aircraft carrier section. World War II is missing, which is interesting. <laughs> Not there. The signage for World War I is there, but you can't get to it. Um, and then like the early days of flight one is just gone it's just not there at all would you say like the the signage they used was fairly on the 
on the nose in terms of like what's actually there. Yeah, and the way that it's designed is spot on. Mm -hmm. Um, so then they put us in the planetarium, which I was like, okay, the planetarium's on the second floor in this section, but like I'll give them that liberty that they're trying to like get us to the planetarium. Um, and the planetarium looks generally right in how it's designed. Um, so that was cool. Uh, so you end up like going up the back end after the planetarium like rips and you go to the second floor and you're like, oh, second floor, second floor, second floor, second floor. We're going to see some cool stuff. And then like a space shuttle came flying down at us. Also, we went through an area that does not exist. Well, that's later. I thought that was early. It after you get through the space shuttle, you pipe through where the IMAX is, and that's okay. where the that's where that one is. Um, but yeah, the space shuttle, like I think it, I don't know, I think it's where the IMAX is. Anyway, they made this entire false like Mars landscape that just does not exist at all. There, there's not like the Mars rover there. None of that is actually there. That's where the IMAX is. <laughs> Um, and so that was very odd. And I, I was pointing out to you, I'm like, if you look at the signage on here, like none of it actually exists because this exhibit doesn't exist. It's just a bunch of blurs. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> which again is something that I'm just like, oh my God, Al, why are you even looking at this kind of thing and like pointing <laughs> it out? But like it, it was something that stood out to me that it was like, they can't actually have signage for this because it does not exist. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like I said, the, the space shuttle falls down at one point and I have ranted to you about it because um, the space shuttle cannot physically fit inside that building at all. Like it, even if you put it lengthwise, the wings would not fit. Um, that space shuttle is at Udvar Hazi, which is the other Air and Space Museum, which is more of like a hangar style mm -hmm. and is like, 30 miles west <laughs> um, definitely not in the same area no 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 no. um and so if this had been accurate what would have flung at us from that section would have been charles Lindbergh's plane which would have been interesting in and of itself to have charles Lindbergh's plane like spirit of st louis would have come at us like that would have mm -hmm. been pretty cool um charles Lindbergh was a racist and an awful person but like you know it, it would have been like a symbolic airplane still coming at us instead of like the shuttle that physically couldn't be there. True. But again, I wonder if that's something spirit of St. Louis wouldn't have any kind of like copyright rules against it at this point. Um, hmm. but, uh, they did have like a tiny Amelia Earhart section. Very, very tiny. Um, and most of that exhibit was just empty. Um, cause that section of, um, of the museum calls is called milestones of flight. And so it has a bunch of like really important airplanes and, um, on the bottom floor, it has a lot of more space stuff, but it's like really important structures that are there that it's just like an empty space. And it's like, this is kind of weird. Um, so, okay, maybe this is still salvageable. Maybe it's fine. There's a shuttle coming at us, but it's going to be okay. We're going to keep going. Um, then the whole Mars thing happened. And then I tried to go into space lab, which I was excited that space lab was there. It's kind of cool. Um, but you couldn't go in it. That was a bummer. Also, like, the door section of it's not in the, like, right spot exactly. Um, and I really wanted to go to the Race to the Moon section because, like, it has McDivitt painted on the walls in there. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would have been really, really cool to go in there because um, there's a lot of great stuff. But, like, and there would have been a lot of great places to, like, hide for a shooter. Like, a mm -hmm. lot of really good places for level design but it's completely blocked off. Um, they also don't have anything in the spot that the right flyer would have been in at all, which again is an odd choice. Um, 
they didn't have anything in the temporary exhibit, which is fine. Then they duplicated the aircraft carrier exhibit. And so at this point, I'm just like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. What are they doing? And we we go downstairs, and I see, like, the V-2 rockets there. But I look at the signage, and there's, like, a pilot's face and, like, a lunar lander and on all four sides of it. I'm like, what? No. It's the V-2. Um. And they ha did, they do have the um, I forget the name of it, but it's the uh, the U.S. Soviet Union connector um, structure. They have that there. They don't have um, the Hubble um, backup at all there, which is an odd choice. And um, that entire section also has a metric butt ton of spacesuits. That none of them are there. So, I started to get a little grumpy, <laughs> um, to say the least. Uh, and you can attest to my my feelings on that. Let me let me ask you this because obviously, you, as you said, like copyright shouldn't be a thing for museums and, and all that. Are you thinking that like the space stuff might be? I mean, that's a possibility, but also. Could this also be just the fact that, like, how much access could the Ubisoft team, whichever one of the 30 of them that worked on this game, was able to get access to? I mean... Or any, could get access to? Any of this stuff that I've been talking about, you could get picture of. Any of it. Because it's all in open space. Um... They do have some spacesuits out in like the milestones of flight second, like the bottom area, and they do have the lunar lander there. Mm -hmm. Um, so like not all spacesuits are like not there, they didn't do them accurately, like they're not the right spacesuits, but like you know, I didn't expect that. Um, but like any of these exhibits, you're allowed to take pictures, you're allowed to take video. But how much is that is is for personal use and then for commercial use? Because that might be the kicker. Then how were they able to do some parts of it, but not all the parts? That's that's the weird part. Because like it's it's kind of right in places, but kind of not. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's it oh in in overall it's like very confusing. But also, I wonder how much of it is just like you know. How much of them are? How much is it is, is of them going for like accuracy versus? Hey, we want this to be fun for pe for people to play. Yeah, and I think that's like why the Mars thing was added in, and like why mm -hmm. the shuttle was there was like dramatic effect and all that jazz. Right. And I I just think that there's so much there that like they left out that could have been really really fun, or just an interesting detail to have in there. I did point out at you that um, that they did leave in like the employee escalators in the middle of the museum. Of... <laughs> okay, I'm like oh, if you go down there, there was like this person's office, and this person's office, this person's office. Um, so that was kind of funny that they decided to leave that in. So like the structure of the building is actually accurate. Like they have the exhibit spaces where they're supposed to be. They have the entrances for the planetarium and IMAX where they're supposed to be. They have like the entrances of the building where they're supposed to be, including with the security equipment on those sides. They have the employee escalators to downstairs there, including having the, the swipe badge gates for it. But then like, you just kind of like the bed on some of the content and like why why would you put so much detail into like the building itself and like a lot of the like minute details that no one's going to notice when there's so much that's really important there that you just ignored maybe it's also just like them coming up with their own ideas for exhibits that could possibly fit in there as and like a way to show like it's a different period of time essentially 
I I don't know. I would love to hear like the teams that worked on these specific sections just like hear their explanations for like, you know, why they were accurate with some stuff and then took liberties with other things. You know, like how much of that was was dependent on like how what they thought players would would enjoy or interact with versus mm-hmm. like being, you know, realistic to what's actually there and everything and also just like making it a video game level on top of that. Like there are so many that. weird ins and outs about this entire section that you could do a deep dive into. That race to the moon section would have been super, super fun. Um How much of that though would it be hard because there's named people in that exhibit? I mean like, you could just Would do- you have to get like the like get permission from the the families of those people? If you leave out the names then it wouldn't be a big deal like if you just put in right space suits like it's fine if you like put in generic pictures of like people there but not name who they are then it's like fine mm-hmm. you know you could have the the monkey corpse there but the way that the race the moon exhibit is designed for one is that there's a lot of corners and everything is painted black so it's kind of a dark exhibit because it's supposed to like emulate space Mm -hmm. um but they have like this one corner that you turn and then you see like a fake version of like the moon where the that's where they kept the spacesuits originally um and then if you turn to the right of that there's like this little alcove that has like some glass but also some wall bits um that has like every single one of the Gemini and Apollo missions listed who was on the mission and um, like how it went, what it did on the outside of those like corners, you have like the, the monkey and um, what was the other, other critter that went to space? Anyway, they're, they're there. And then you have like the space food and things like that. Then there's another just flat wall around a corner that has a bunch of space content. If you keep going, there's a, another alcove that you can watch a film that you can just sit in. Um, it almost sounds like this area would have been too big. It's it's not very big at all. But like, the way you're the way you're describing it, it sounds like it, it would have been like the size of like one of like the the more open parts of that level. Weirdly enough, like I wonder if that's like why they would have like kind of skipped over that or something. I don't know. I, th- I think it would have been way more fun than like where they had us do the firefight at V two. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Because there would have been a lot more in terms of like where you could hide and where you could actually like try and shoot. Yeah. Um, also, there's like a big engine at the end of it that's pretty rad. Um, but there's just so many corners that would make for an interesting shooter but you know i didn't make this game so i was grumpy and also they made (laughs) us exit on the bad exit i don't like that entrance of the museum i like the mall entrance grr um not surprisingly there was no mcdonald's no of course not (laughs) um that's the one thing we can agree on like yeah of course they're not gonna do that no no uh there were a couple other exhibits that were just like missing um and like Mm -hmm. given no explanation of what they're actually supposed to be right um but you know i didn't expect all of them to be there i just expected some of them to be there yeah um, and then they made their most egregious error for me. And we haven't played since I've discovered this error. Which we, we've kind of barely gotten into, to oh, be I, fair. I know, I know. But I was very angry. So there may be more of this area than you're anticipating, maybe? Mm, I mean, based on what we've seen, there access points and also like there is a giant lobby in that building that they just got rid of with two wings on each side of it the the villains just stole it Apparently. they're holding it hostage so after we finished air and space museum we got a new notification it's like you should go to the castle 
And I had mentioned the castle a few times. I was like, I want to see if the castle is here. And you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. So we wandered over there. I was like, oh, look, it's the castle. It's here. Yay. I'm so excited. Um, so then when we got the main mission to go to the castle, I was like, yes, 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 yes. Yes. I want to go to the castle. Let's go to the castle. Let's go to the castle. And um, so they they have the um, the building next door that's like not open to the public. And I'm trying to... Um, Arts and Industries building is next door. It's not open to the public. Or at least it wasn't last I saw it. Um, and it's the same kind of architectural style. Anyway, people don't care about this. Uh, <laughs> so then we're going to the castle. I'm like, yay, castle. I love the castle. It's really, really cool. It was the original Smithsonian. It's a big deal. And we walk in and it's like two tiny dark rooms where everything's destroyed. And then you walk out and it's just like an open garden which there is a garden on the other side of that but as i was just saying there's like this giant lobby area of the castle that has like a miniature version of the entirety of the mall that tells you like where things are and then there are two wings with exhibits on either side and all of that's just missing there's also an upstairs but i've never been there because i'm not that important but that was the original Smithsonian. That was the Smithsonian. And they just made it into two tiny hallways. That we've seen so far. We can't get into the rest of it. How will we get We don't know that we can't get into the rest of it. But where's the lobby? <laughs> Maybe it's around the corner. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, they made the garden outside a lot bigger. And... You know, maybe what they're implying is that that crater hit thing or whatever just took out that part of the building. I don't know. But that doesn't make a lot of sense that there's no trace of where that was. Like, this is not a small building. They made it tiny. And don't have any kind of like important information about it at all. Well, it's going to be a settlement, so I don't. They're probably not going to give you important information in there, anyways. <sighs> it made me sad. I really like that building. It's one of my favorite buildings in the entirety of DC. Like I would go there every single time I would go to DC, and I was on the mall because I really, really like that building. Has very pretty floors. One thing that I will say that I'm impressed about, though, <laughs> and I don't know if it's anything that we'll actually be able to go into, um, but when we were first walking up, I was like, when was this game made? And you, you explained that it was like last year. And I was real interested that they have the African American History Museum there. Like, that's pretty cool. They're up to date. Maybe. I don't know. Like, if we can go in it, maybe I could tell you. But even then, like, there's an entire floor they'd probably ignore because it's like pop culture and sports. Yeah, they would definitely not put that in. Mm -mm. Um, but there's some really neat stuff in there. And I think, honestly... Um, <sighs> this is going to sound horrible, but... I think I know Ubisoft enough to know that like they wouldn't put a lot of the stuff in there because it would be controversial. Well, yeah, their games aren't political after all. Right. Like the way that you enter the museum is that you take an elevator and you go back in time. Like it functions sort of like a time machine and that like as you're descending in the elevator, like you see a timeline counting back and the bottom floor of this is like when slavery begins in the Americas and you're seeing like artifacts from that. You're seeing slave ships. You're seeing that kind of content. And then as you move forward upstairs, 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 you're seeing like how the lives have changed over the years. And I feel like that would be something they would want to stay away from. Because mm -hmm. I'd be like, 
oh, what do you mean African-American people had a bad time in the U.S.? That's not true. And it's like, oh, no, it was actually very true. It was pretty awful. <laughs> but that's too political. We don't do political. But anyway, the building was there. And it's a neat <laughs> building. So that was pretty cool. And that was your trip to Washington. Yeah, I mean, like, I... I saw that they had some of the other Smithsonian's there. I don't know if there's any others that we'll be able to go into because some of them are unlabeled on the map. So I'm thinking they're probably going to stick to like the bigger ones. But I could be wrong. You know, maybe we'll keep playing it and we can update you guys in a few weeks and be like, all right, well, this is this museum. Um, but really, this is just like Al takes Jared through virtual DC. Mm-hmm. And rants a lot. It was a fun ride. Yay! While we looked like tool bags. That's also true. Man, I just want to be a park ranger. That's really all I want. They gave me the glasses. They gave me the shirt. Now I need the pants and I need I need the hat. And then I'll be good. Could use my hat. Do you have the hat? No, I got the... Oh, you have a the really a dumb hat. You have the aviator hat. I have an aviator uh, jacket. Um, the uh, taxis are also pretty accurate. The buses are somewhat accurate. Well, if you want high taxi accuracy, play the Division Two. <laughs> there you go. Oh man. We also are, have been in the White House, but I've never been in the White House, so I couldn't tell you if that's accurate or not. It's, it, it looks white on the outside, so... You know what's inaccurate about it? There should be a heck ton of geese outside of it. All the geese are dead. And, you know what? I think that, honestly, if the apocalypse happened, geese would survive because they're so d mean. <laughs> there should be a ton of geese out there that are just like, What are you doing in my White House? <laughs> Untitled Goose Game 2. There you go. Uh, the Goose Takes DC. There you go. Well, I think that's going to wrap this episode up then. Yep. No District Taco. Yes. No, no geese. No geese. Uh, so if you'd like more from us, go to seasonalrecheckup.com or sac.cool is where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Seasonal Checkup and Jared Now Watch. You also find columns reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com to the columns reviews. You can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash anime checkup. And you can support us on Patreon. Buy us a slice of pizza. Patreon.com slash as I see OVA. I love pizza. Also, so you get uh, exclusive podcasts over there. The Unedited bow. podcasts. And maybe some new stuff over there as well in the near future. Mm hmm. Mm. Interesting. Next week we'll do something. I don't know. We'll see. That's next week. Yep. But for now we'll walk through DC and yell A about lot. how the museums are inaccurate. A lot. <laughs>